Okay, so Nikolai, um, listen, I just wanted to say, first of all, that we're really looking forward to having you. This is your, your debut performance, um, or these are your debut performances with the Boston Symphony Orchestra, and we're looking forward to welcoming you. Thank you. I'm myself looking very much forward to, to coming to Boston. I've had the chance to to attending both concerts and rehearsal on previous visits, so it'll be a, it'll be a wonderful opportunity to, to start making music together. Well, we're looking forward to it, too. Um, I wanted to, to talk first about uh, the Elgar Concerto. Uh, this is a, a great work, but not necessarily one that, uh, that one would choose or some people would choose to make their debut performance with a, with, a, with a big orchestra. So we're really excited that you've decided to do that, and I wonder if you could tell us why. Well, there's uh, um, a couple of things I would like to say about that. First of all, I think the, the Elgar is, is unjustly rarely played, and I think that has to do with a couple of things. One is a simply very practical reason, that it's a long piece, and it's hard to... To, to program. I mean, what do you program it with? Do you put it in the first half? It's almost too long for that, isn't it? And uh, that means you really need a conductor who is willing to say, well, let's put it in the second half, where it actually belongs, the same way you would put a Brahms second piano concerto or, or, or similar in the second half. And of course, uh, um, Sir Colin correctly did that uh, in, in putting together this week's program. Um, the reason that I chose this piece, again, there are two reasons for that. One is the fact that it is with Sir Colin, um, whom I have a very long and close relationship with and who I admire and have great affection for. And he is, I mean, if anybody, the Elgar conductor. So it, it, it seems obvious on that on that level. And, and also, Sir Colin and I uh, recorded this piece last summer uh, because this season is um, I mean the year 2010 marks the 100th anniversary of the Elgar Violin Concerto and so it seemed particularly poignant to, to, to bring it to as many places as I could in 2010 um, especially so in the light of the fact that I am playing the violin on which this concerto was first performed by Fritz Kreisler with Elgar conducting in 1910. Yes, I, I had heard about that connection, which I found so extraordinary. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, of course, a legendary violin. Of course, Kreisler is, is a, a legendary violinist. So this is quite a wonderful set of circumstances. Could you talk about how you came to this instrument? Well, I think it came to me, I suppose. It's been around longer and will hopefully be around uh, much after I'm gone. Um, the violin came, or oh, we came to each other in, in 2006, and, you know, I got a call. I was sort of looking for an instrument and had somebody who was willing to, to perhaps sponsor it, and, and somebody said, listen, you should try this. Violin, it belongs to a, um, used to belong to a very famous violinist. I said, sure, we'll try it. And, and I did, and, and it was sort of a, I was trying another violin at the same time, so it was a, a kind of a process that took a couple of months before this one finally said, wow, this violin really has something, and I, and I gave it a serious, um, serious sort of try and, and, and fell in love with it. And it was only sort of after the foundation, the Relix Foundation in Denmark had, had, had bought it that we started thinking, well, if this was really the primary concert instrument of Fritz Kreisler between 1904 and 1919, which we have a letter that, that, that he, he, where he writes about that, then that means that the Elga Violin Concerto was premiered in 1910 on this violin. And then, of course, you know, it became very, I don't know, became sort of very self-evident to, to just put it together and, and try and mark that somehow and, and, and bring the Elgar as a sort of a 2010 project for me with, with that violin. Of course. That's a wonderful, a wonderful way to, to, to commemorate it. Um, you spoke a little bit earlier about your, your relationship with Sir Colin and your affection for him. And, of course, we at the Boston Symphony have a long relationship with him as well and admire him greatly in, in many, many respects, but especially as an Elgar conductor. Could you talk about, about uh, what it's like working on this, this particular piece with Sir Colin, who has so much incredible experience with that repertory? 
Well, I think what he what he brings so well to this music is this sense of constant contrast or or coexistence of seemingly um, of seemingly disparate elements of human nature. You know, you have grandeur, but in the background you you still have a sense of intimacy, or you have a great passion yet with restraint, and and those sort of uh, conflicts or, or contrast he gets out so extraordinarily well because of course he is he is familiar i don't want to become too extra musical as well but there is an element of that very much being part of the english tradition certainly of the edwardian english uh, time in which elgar lived and and i think i think uh, you know as musicians we have some composers that just speak to us in a certain way and it's very clear that uh, that to Sir Colin, Elgar is one of his close, intimate composers, and he he brings as well. I must say, I remember this from the recording sessions, an incredible youthfulness and 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 passion into this music that many of a 35-year-old conductor would envy him. Yes, yes, 